90.3 KEXP online, all over the world at KEXP.org. You're listening to Audio Oasis. My name is Charlize. I'm your host. It's now time for a live performance by Chaprice on KEXP. Ten thousand crashes over and over Same mistakes I'm a glutton for the pain Painted smiles Stage laughter We were the greatest fame Tippy-toeing through the motions Eyes were crying oceans and oceans Solitude, though I'm standing right next to you. to Chaprice on KEXP. Did it in my 
such a beautiful melody interrupted by the rain Self-sabotaging her song for you Why won't you let it play such a beautiful melody interrupted by the rain Such a beautiful melody interrupted by the rain Ninety point three KEXP. You're listening to a performance by Chaprice, and I think I was just um, my breath was taken. I didn't know what to say. Thank you, Charlize. Yeah, it's really nice to have you here, and it's taken us a bit to get you here, but this is nice. I know. I'm so glad that it's with you. I Me just too. love you so much. I love you so much. I'm just glad to be here. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so you just played her song and Molting, which are both from the EP, and I remember. When I heard that you were doing this new collaboration with Brandon, IG88, and you added Philip too, mm-hmm. I, I kind of flipped out and I got really excited and I made <laughs> you guys come on the show to talk about it. Yes, um, I was equally as excited when we first started creating together because Molting was the first song that we ever did. And from that moment on, I was just like, this is exactly what I've been needing in my life. So, How yeah. did you meet up with everybody? How did this happen? Um, it's kind of crazy, you know, the musical world is very intertwined, so, um, as far as IG88 and I go, um, Ian introduced us, my manager, and, um, he was like, we were kind of talking, this is before we were partnering as, like, manager and artist, and I told him the sound that I was going for, and he immediately was like, I actually know someone that I feel like you would work well with, personality-wise, and just kind of like, you guys have a lot in common and I just really feel like it'll embody the sound that you're looking for and it did um the first song I ever heard was with him and Jenny Potts and yeah. song, which song was that seahorse paternity test. seahorse paternity test but it was like one of the most beautiful songs I'd ever heard before and so right then and there I was like I feel like this is gonna work and then Philip and I kind of just have mutual friends within the Seattle music scene and it turned out that we had already done a song together with Saul on 2020 so it was kind of like oh we were actually on that song together so it just worked and I showed him what Brandon and I had been working on and he busted his cello out and started playing and it just it was magic so um speaking of Jenny Potts I've been following her a lot lately and she was actually like a singer songwriter before she kind of transitioned into what she's doing now which is more electronic and um you or similar because you were a soul funk artist before you started and you had a full band. Mm-hmm. And I remember seeing you at the Crocodile a really long time ago. That was probably my last show before kind of taking on this new sound. Um, what has that, that point, transition been like? Um, it's been incredible because I took a lot of time off after that sort of era to figure out exactly who I was as an artist. And I feel like this is exactly the sound that that it is made for me. So um, it's just been a really smooth transition, especially when you find the right people to complete the puzzle. So it's just, it's all falling into place. Yeah, I think, um, I especially like this sound for you because I think your vocals over these beautiful sounds just like make melty chocolate. It's really (laughs) nice. I love that. I also, I I like that um, Blue Sky Black Death hopped on a Mm -hmm. remix too. Yeah, those are my guys. Um, we I've actually been on a couple of their albums as well, so um, it was just an equal fit when we I started showing them the new stuff, and they're like, oh, my God, we yeah. love this sound for you. This is exactly what we yeah. imagined you as an artist. But, you know, you have to figure out who you are as an individual and as an artist on your own. You can't be forced into anything, and um, and it, it was a really easy um, process once I started kind of dabbling in different sounds and textures. And also, I'm just very attracted to classical instruments, and I always yeah. have been. So um, I definitely knew that that had to be 
a main part of the production because it's the most similar to the human vocals. And so since I don't necessarily play an instrument, I'm definitely using my voice as an instrument with this project. So you'll hear lots of like vocal manipulation and um, just different textures. We do like weird pitchy up and down stuff with yeah. it. So, yeah. so besides the classical element, um, Brandon's got some auxiliary percussion over there mm-hmm. as well. And you He's can got hear a few that up in the EP. <laughs> Yeah. Well, this stuff that I have here, um, actually just sent Phil a text and told him to bring me like random trinkets, and he brought a hippie bag full of things I'd never seen before. So now I'm just kind of like looping them, running them through effects cool. on top of beats and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, I noticed that over there. Um, another question. Um, so you are a Seattle resident. Mm-hmm. We are rare. We are. I was <laughs> yeah. actually just talking about this the other day. There are very few of us that are actually born and raised in Seattle, so I'm proud to say that I am. Yeah, me too. Too. Um, me too. Me oh. too. And Philip too. Oh, all of us. Heck yeah, Northgate for life. Baby. Yeah, I'm West Seattle. <laughs> me too, but from the redneck outskirts. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was um, Roxbury, R- White Center. Mm, yeah, I was Skyway. Right over there. All right. So we're all Philip. We're all in this together. What do you represent? <laughs> Northgate. Northgate, okay. The mall. Ooh. The mall. Ooh. The mall's kind of scary. I Phil actually I still live in yeah. the mall. I still live in the house that I grew up in. <laughs> he was actually That's born nice. in the Cinnabon. Right by the mall. So. That's really nice. He was born in Cinnabon. Um, <laughs> no. It's actually a pretty nice neighborhood up the, up north of Northgate. Oops, did I, just I say know, that? Olive I Garden. I mean, it's terrible. That's Don't like move there. one of the <laughs> things that I always think about. Northgate, Olive Garden. It's gone. Oh, there no. is no Olive Garden. Well, I have nothing to think about for Northgate so anymore. it's over. That's, yeah. that's just, that's a wrap. <laughs> There is something no else that I think there. about regarding Northgate, but it's really not appropriate, so I have to tell you guys off air. I would, I sure. really want to hear the story. Yes, yeah, I will remind you as soon as we're off. <laughs> I am, I'm famous for being inappropriate uh, on on here, so I, I'm a fan of that. Famous That's why we tune in. Let's let's keep it pro- appropriate. <laughs> right. um, I did have a real question though. It was um, so your mom sang a national anthem. Oh yeah, sang the national anthem at a game, mm-hmm. and uh, it made me think about that my family is a is a singing family too except for me i can't well sing. you still found your way to like you know i found my way somewhere uh, and um i wanted to ask what it was growing what it was like growing up in a singing family it was amazing because um i i was always around musicians and i was also encouraged to pursue my art and so it was never one of those things where you need to become a doctor, you need to become this or that. It was like, okay, if that's what you want to do. And my dad always told me that I've never seen a mic that I didn't fall in love with. So I, you'll see baby pictures of me sitting on his lap while he's playing the piano. And I'm just looking at him like, oh, my God, I want to do this forever. So it started that young for me. And, um, yeah, we just always sang and were in choirs. And Do you remember the first time you performed? At what age? Yeah, actually, I think I think I was that one nerdy girl in, in choir class that was like always trying to get the lead part in the musical. So I'm pretty sure it was my second grade Christmas show, and I I think I sang Silent Night, and and that was it was in front of a pretty large amount of people, especially for you know being in the second grade. But I just I didn't feel I don't ever remember feeling nervous performing, so it's just it's always been a natural thing for me. So killing it from the age of Eight years old? Is that second grade? Second grade is eight? Six. Ish? Six. six. Well, I don't know. Somewhere in there. All right. <laughs> six, six, six. Well, you have a couple more songs mm-hmm. to perform. We'll have two more. Chaprice, live on KEXP. I'm so important, don't want your heart Soon this will be over Only one thing that I could ever want from you I'll have to admit, I kinda like your face But don't tell no one Cause I don't wanna face the obvious things I'd rather not feel for you Can you keep it hidden, babe? Tell me, can you keep a secret, babe? Ay, 
Listening to live music by Chaprice on KEXP. Remember when we were in love, we thought we had forever. Don't hold it back from me Despite my disbelief In all this time We put that on the line Intentionally blind Why? Cause you were the part of me that made me feel like a queen There's nothing that I couldn't reach when you were flying next to me Way past the atmosphere, you left my heart floating up there And now it's crashing all around me, hard to conceive We had 
change the plan I found it hard for me to breathe Now I can feel a thing Longing for relief I, I, I Cause you are the part of me that made me feel like a queen There's nothing that I couldn't reach when you were flying next to me Forever, forever.